Hi, welcome to Biomechanoid Blues. I'm Andy Popovic. And today I want to talk to you about a very small book that frankly does a better job of capturing the creative process than most larger novels and documentaries. And that is The Unstrung Harp, or Mr. Earbass Writes a Novel, by uh, Edward Gorey. So, The Unstrung Harp is one of his first published books. Uh, the style is a little bit different than what he would later on develop, but what it does is it captures some of the craziness of trying to get something concrete out of the creative process. Um, you get to see our humble protagonist and, and author wandering around his house trying to figure out the story, uh, at one point getting so involved that his, uh, his characters start showing up at the top of stairs and muttering at him. But the part I'm going to focus on is actually going to be the part that has been, frankly, eating up most of my June uh, and a good chunk of my May, and that is the editing process. Right now, I am in the process of editing a, uh, a novel, um, Phantom Killer. Uh, I've taken a break for the month of July because I have a short story that I want to get written up for an anthology. But uh, this process has been a bit all-consuming. Uh, I essentially have been taking my draft zero, which is now covered in different notes, and cutting it to, uh, to pieces, chapter by chapter. Now, I've doing this electronically, but you'll actually see in The Unstrung Harp, Mr. Earbass sits down, and, and when he decides to, uh, to edit his book, he takes the manuscript, he gets scissors, uh, you know, ink, pen, library paste, tape, and literally begins to cut and paste different sections, moving things around, scratching out items and writing over them, putting in new bits on top of old ones. So you might think, oh, this is, that's a bit much to go through, but we're actually doing that most of the time without even really realizing it. I mean, copy and paste has become natural whenever we're getting information from, uh, from the, the, the web. You copy something, you drop it into a, uh, an email. And I'm doing something similar. In this case, though, I'm using Scrivener, which is a, a program designed for folks who are working on longer projects like books and screenplays and the like to help them organize things. And what I'm finding is I need to move stuff around. So there was one point I looked at a chapter and realized I was missing a scene. You know, I needed something to emphasize essentially the, the emotional stakes, what everyone was, you know, involved with in that, and also to carry over some, you know, dread and threat into the next chapter. The way I had it originally written, there was no transition scene. So I had to chop apart one chapter and move bits of it into a, a, another, create a whole new scene. Uh, there was a previous uh, chapter that I split off um, you know, I made one scene into two, moved one to the end of uh, that chapter, moved the other to the beginning of the, uh, the next. In filmmaking, this is basically like putting together an assembly cut. You start putting together all the scenes that you have using the best footage that you've shot, and you're looking at it and thinking, okay, is this hanging together? Does this work? Do I have any continuity lapses? Do I need to go back and do any reshoots? And... You know, for me, reshoots right now is basically creating new content, adding that in. And then the next edit pass, and there will be a next edit pass, I've got to see, okay, did this new stuff fit with the old stuff? Do I still have to move things around? Did my last edit get this where it needed to be? The editing process is 
long. I won't lie about that. Uh, especially for someone like me who really only can devote weekend time to doing this. Um, I can scratch out, you know, raw writing, you know, bits and pieces here and there during the week. But editing, I mean, really sort of digging in, giving myself time to compose, that's another beast entirely. And that does require time and attention. If you haven't seen that, you know, in real life, if you have not been around somebody who has been going crazy about moving things, bits and places, and asking themselves, is, is this working? Does the character really feel this way? Well, the unstrung harp might help. It's not terribly modern, but it gets the feeling there. And yes, afterwards, you know, you do kind of want to take a big train out to nowhere while bundled into your large woolly coat because your brain needs a rest. And that's what I'm doing in the month of July. My brain honestly needed a rest from two months worth of editing that, you know, has only gotten me, frankly, seven chapters in out of 27. I've got an entire rest of the year to look forward to. So I wanted to create something that was not quite as intensive before I move forward. It's one of the, the joys of short stories is the editing process is much more compact, different beast, same outcome, same crazed amount of cutting, pasting, and if you're, you know, our protagonist from the novel, probably a good bottle of sherry involved in there. Well, that's what I have been doing for the month. July, I'm going to be uh, writing something, and I'll have something to say about that at the end of the month as, uh, as well. And then it's going to be back to editing and other things. So, off to the word minds once again. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Take care. Be seeing you, and I hope you're having a, uh, a nice summer so far. We have an example of Zoe, noir cat, in repose in the summer sun. As you can see, this is a beautiful example of chiaroscuro lighting. One direct source highlighting her and her environment. We will, of course, be rubbing the belly of the Zoe at some point in the future, but right now she is completely unaware of the tickling that is to come. Mm -hmm.